And viewers, we're sitting here <laughs> after his gig, Todd Sharpville, and he uh, just ended up in the blues, uh, Rips and Blues in Ralte, sitting on a Jupiter beer, enjoying what he did on stage, or didn't you? <laughs> That's a loaded question. I'm enjoying um, your beautiful countryside and the beautiful people of the Netherlands. Um, as for what I did on stage, I have no idea. I'm, I'm not objective enough to have a clue as to whether I did good or not. Um, it's always fun to come here to the Netherlands. Yeah, but how do you, how do, how went it for you to see in a, a big crowd in the in a tent like this? It's it's great. I mean, uh, the last big crowd, I think, uh, Groningen Festival, I remember, was was good fun. The Moulin Festival, I've done twice, which I've always enjoyed in Oslo. Um and I've had many wonderful memories and some great friendships that I formed from these festivals and from the late night jamming and, and the hotel bar experiences. Um, I don't know. I mean, at the very first Moulin Festival I remember I did, I had a. Um, I met Larry McRae that night. And we've been the closest of friends ever since for the last 20 years or so. And then the last time I played, I had the same experience with Michael Burks, where we spent the whole night up in our hotel room jamming and talking, drinking beer, and. Um, and then leaving in, our, in the same clothes from the night before in our tour buses to go in our different directions. And then two weeks later, I heard a voice from a parking lot in uh, southeast Australia, in Naruma, at the Naruma Blues Festival. It's Todd Sharpell, and it's Michael Burks. Uh, so I don't know, I mean, they're, they're, two, they're two very, very dear friends. I, I, I associate uh, coming to Holland with making good friends. <laughs> well, you mentioned a couple of things that were questions on my list. I don't have an actual list, but in my head, and that's because you're 20 years ago you were first over and then it took quite a while to uh, produce another CD or come over here again. What happened, Todd, in uh, between? Well, no, 20 years ago, I suppose, I first came here promoting Touch of Your Love back in the early 90s. Um, I suppose um, it took a long time between albums because I spent a long time promoting the first album and then working with other people. Um, and there are experiences of, uh, of putting together backing bands for other artists and things that was uh, was interesting to me. And I was thinking more as an individual musician than as a career-driven artist. <laughs> um, and I didn't have a, a very driving management at the time that were suggesting that maybe, Todd, you should be in the studio recording your own shit instead of having fun with other musicians. But I went for having fun with other musicians. And um, I think after the last album, when I did The Meaning of Life, we promoted that a lot and came to Holland and uh, I, life took over. I had a bunch of personal shit happen, my marriage collapsed, I uh, had a nervous breakdown, uh, went into a loony bin for one month, which is very traditional for the British blues guitar players. I think we've all done it. <laughs> They've all done it at one point or another. I decided to join the club. And um, yeah, the, the, to be honest, the fight to see my kids became like a full-time job. And I had to move, work my music around it to a degree. And this is finally now, seven years after my divorce is now resolved, just last Friday. Uh, <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> you can have a good weekend. Yeah, I mean, I'm uh, finally, I'm back to making records, uh, regularly, <laughs> I can add. And uh, I, have, I have an option which the record label are picking up for the next album. And uh, um, yeah, we, we have a, a, a permanent work schedule happening now and I'm back to musician mode, and it's more so than dad mode. Yeah. Is that a reason why you're? Um, does that any reflect any songs on the, the double CD Porchlight, the personal shit? Mostly is a very creative period if you're deep uh, under down there in yeah. your personal life. Yep, uh, lousy husband, real good dad is a is a popular favorite with the Fathers for Justice movement. Uh, <laughs> Superman and Spider Man. The I was asked to do a lot of that actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, I had a. Um, I had I had other things going on where, where, as an artist, you have to distance yourself from from politics as best as possible, and I've had varying movements of, of politics, wanting to be to be involved in one capacity or another, and um, it's easy to alienate elements of your audience. And really, as an artist, what you're supposed to be doing is bringing everyone together, regardless of what fucking politics they believe in. So it's best to keep your personal politics to yourself, I think. Um, my job is to entertain, not to lecture. <laughs> I just know one, only two politicians of her musicians who are in, into politics. It's Bob Dylan and Bono. I don't, I don't, I don't think of Bob as a Sir Bob, as a, as a politician. Um, 
I'm going to be, I think, working with, with Bob at the end of the year, beginning of next year. Yeah. Um, we have varying degrees of separation between us. It's funny, uh, Denny Freeman is a good friend of mine who did a Dylan album and, and a Dylan tour. Mick Taylor's a good friend of mine and he MD'd Dylan stuff through the 80s. Uh, Mark Knopfler's a good friend of mine, he played on Infidels. And then Du Robillard, who produced my new record, is a good friend of mine, uh, played on, on, on a Dylan album. And Terence Simeon, who's a good friend of mine, is a friend of Dylan's, and his daughter Marcella was excitedly telling me when she went out for dinner with, with the Dylan's for one evening when her dad won a Grammy. And, um, so I'm doing some work with Albert Hammond, which involves Bob Dylan with a, a duet, which we're doing later in the year, which I'm uh, going to be presiding over and producing in the studio. So I finally get a chance to... to and I also opened up for Bob Dylan one time with, with Danny Gillespie and her band, who's an old, an old Dylan girlfriend. So, hopefully, with the six degrees of separation, I would like at some point or another maybe to do some work with Dylan in the, in a, in the longer term. It would be fun. He's one of the people who, who's inspired me the most. <laughs> and uh, talking about inspiration, do you grow a lot? How, how important was he for producing the CD or helping out with it? Really important. I mean, uh, this CD was... Um, I recorded a singer-songwriter divorce record after the Nuthouse experience and all of this, which cost almost a couple of hundred grand to make. And the, the record company went bankrupt before it could be released. So it's in a drawer. And, um, so that was my divorce album number one. And so Portrait really is my divorce album number two. And in the midst of having all these things I need to, to express, you said to yourself, I've been away for a long time. Um, it was because life was happening. So I had a lot to say with Porchlight in terms of what had happened since anyone had last seen me on the road. Um, and then my dad died just before we started recording the, the record and I kind of had to, I, I changed the ethos and the gear really of what the album was about, largely because of that. Because um, there was more to life going on than just my divorce and uh, just missing my kids and stuff like that. And um, I had to make that record surrounded by friends. And uh, Duke is a really, really old, uh, he's an old compatriot who's uh, a very uh, experienced, wise and, and sensitive man, as are all the musicians who he worked with. Um, I've known Kim Wilson a long time, and Joe Lewis Walker is my, my mentor from uh, when I was 14 years old, 13 or 14 I first met Joe. So I was surrounded by people who really, who I could be myself around entirely, which made the album very cathartic, which I, I think possibly so that was why, from a business point of view, I should have been working with Duke just at that time. But from a personal point of view, it was great to be with Duke at that moment in time. Because uh, the album actually was a very joyful experience because of it. Talking to you, it seems to me that all you do is a struggle between uh, the head and the heart. <laughs> but that, that's real life for everyone else, surely. I mean, <laughs> just because I'm a musician doesn't make me uh, in any way devoid of having to go through these things. With the difference that I have the cathartic ability to be able to heal myself through talking about this shit, expressing it, and putting it in a way that other people, that in a way, show some empathy for everyone else. Uh, if you can write songs that everyone feels were written for them, um, then you've done something, uh, then you've done something decent with your time. Uh, and yeah, I mean, you know, we had Lousy Husband on this album, we had uh, Busted in Pieces, which is the first song I wrote in the Looney Bin. Um, which is on porch light, which I had a, I was on 24 hour death watch by the nurses. I mean, they, they would take my guitar from me when I was finished working, um, because in case I was gonna take the strings and, and just strangle myself or something, you know, crazy. So it's good to get the shit off my chest, to be able to write it, and then finally, for people to hear what's really been going on in my life, and express it the way that it happens, rather than uh, conceitedly write an album in the hope that you can impress people, which I, I've grown out of that notion. <laughs> What's more important, creating the songs uh, or playing them live? Both, really. It's, it's two sides of a... It's a bit like, um, what's more important, the romantic dates or the amazing sex uh, when it comes down to a, a great relationship? I mean, it's all part and parcel in a way of the same thing, isn't it? Well... <laughs> I don't know what you mean. <laughs> Todd, we can round this up. Yeah, man, 12 minutes. Long time. I'm gonna really thank you for this small insight. We're gonna use it on our website and uh, cut it into pieces. Unfortunately, we don't have any footage on your stage, but we can make up for that one uh, well, somehow. That, that could be a good thing if I messed up, I don't know. <laughs>